Amen, amen, and amen. Well, let us continue our study on the renewal. Today, I would entitle it, The End of Mourning. If you have a Bible, go ahead and turn, if you would, to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 12, and we see the story of David. Many great leaders struggled tremendously with depression. One of those was Winston Churchill. He often called depression that black dog. There were times where he had trouble getting out of bed, times when he didn't want to eat, when he missed meetings, times when, when he was overwhelmed with sorrow, with sadness for the, the great loss and the great responsibilities he had to his nation during World War II. But time and time again, he had to get up. He had to get going again. We thought of Abraham Lincoln yesterday and all that he had to endure, the loss of three of his children, the loss of the love of his life, losing election after election after election, and then the harshness of the Civil War itself. What great difficulty, but he had to get back up. When we come to Second Samuel chapter 12, David has made a grievous, grievous sin. David has committed adultery with Bathsheba, and just as bad, he, he covered it up by having her husband murdered, and then it looked like he got away with it, and people thought he was a really upright, really generous king when he took Bathsheba into his house to be one of his wives, and people thought, wow, King David really takes good care of his soldiers and their families, and little did they know she was pregnant with his child, and the prophet confronted him and said, David, You've done this terrible sin and God is going to judge you. The sword will never leave your house and this child will not live. And so David is in a state of mourning. He's in a state of depression and, and he's not governing. He's not generaling. He's staying home. He's laying down a lot. He's weeping and he's weeping. And finally, in, in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 20, it says, And David got up from the earth. He was literally laying on the ground. Maybe you've been there. Where you don't even make it to the bed. You don't even sit in the chair. You're just curled up in that fetal position on the ground. That's how David was. It says he got up from the earth and he washed and he changed his clothes and he anointed himself and then he worshiped. And after he worshiped, he got something to eat and then he got back to reigning and ruling. Then he got back to, to the battle front. Then he got back to being the king that he was before. There comes a time when we have to get back up. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 39, it says, We are not those that stay small. We are not those that shrink back. We, we might get knocked down seven times, but we're in the habit of, of getting back up. Imagine a family that's, that's real excited about a wedding, and so they, they plan for months and months, and it's a destination wedding, and they, they got the tickets to Hawaii, and, and they got their friends and family on board, and, and the pastor's ready, and they're excited to go, and then... A month before somebody in the family tragically dies, and there's a funeral, there's a wake, there's a time of weeping and mourning, but all those tickets have been bought, and the couple's got plans to move into a house, and they got jobs, and they got they got life waiting for them, and so the, the family does take that trip to Hawaii, and they do have a great celebration. There's a time to weep, there's a time to dance. There's a time to hug. There's a time to refrain from hugging. In Ecclesiastes, it makes it very clear there's a time for everything. And friend, I want to encourage you. There is a time to weep. There is a time to be down. There is a, there is a sadness. David lost his child. David would have the sword in his family for the rest of his life. This is a terrible grievance. Anybody, naturally, of course, we would grieve these things. And there has to come a time where he gets back up because he remembers there's more to do. There's more than this. I, at times I've gone to, or not gone to, I've watched the, the, the big fights on the UFC pay-per-views. I remember when Conor McGregor was fighting Jose Aldo was supposed to, they promoted it. They traveled around the world. I mean, they were so excited about this big fight, the, the King of Rio against the Notorious. And it was over in 15 seconds. Conor McGregor knocked it out. Well, everybody applauded the knockout power. It's like, man, we came to see a show. We came for more than this. Your life has more. Your life has more chapters. Sometimes it helps to wash. Sometimes when I'm really tired, I go take a shower because it wakes me up. Sometimes when, when I feel sick or I've had a flu and I've been sweating, I, I go take a shower, I, I rinse, I wash because it, it helps get me going. It prepares my mind. It prepares my body for what's next. And David gets up from the ground and then he washes. You got to remember that you're going to have to face God. There are a lot of outstanding warrants. Do you know what I mean by that? When somebody commits a crime and, 
and there's a warrant out for their arrest, and then they're arrested, they're brought to the judge, and, and they can say guilty, not guilty, but then they have to get the evidence and get their lawyer, and, and there's a time period. Sometimes they're out on bail, sometimes they're out on their own recognizance, but there's a date set where they have to come back to court and face the judge, and a lot of people don't. That's why when they pull you over, they ask for your license and registration. They're seeing if there's any outstanding warrants. Between me and God, there's no outstanding warrants. I met with him this morning. I'm going to meet with him tonight. He's going to be with me all day. But if you know you've been sinning, if you know you've been doing wrong, and you say, hey, I'm not going to meet with God until I die, David gets up and he washes and then he worships. He spends time in the presence of God. It's very wise to spend time with that judge before that time of judgment. Go now and say, God, I got to get some things right with you because I know when I die, I'm going to stand before you. I'm going to make some adjustments. I know people that have a court date. Man, are they great at community service. That alley gets cleaned out every time somebody's got a court date coming. Say, Pastor, I got to do some good deeds so it can go on my record. I got to make amends to the people I hurt. I got to pay back my debts. I got to get a job. I got to look solid. I, I got to go before the judge. And what am I going to say? Well, if I helped out at the church, if I have a good job, if I paid back those, if I made restitution, if I'm in a program, then I'll have a lot to say. And the judge will have the opportunity to be a little bit lenient to me. I'm going to make adjustments now. David, you committed adultery. You committed murder. And now you're, you're laying on the ground. But then he gets up and he washes and he realizes, wait a second, this can't be my last chapter. This can't be how it ends. I'm going to go get ready. I'm going to get ready for what's next because you got to get back going. No sooner does David wash and worship and eat than he gets a message from Joab. Who Joab was busy leading the army while David was taking this downtime. And this whole episode of David began at the time when kings go to war. David stayed home. That's what really got him in trouble. He was not where he should have been. He should have been leading the army. David was a great warrior. Even the Lord said, David, your hands are too blood. David killed giants. David fought these fierce battles. And when he got away from that, he, he got too comfortable. He got complacent. He, he got involved in a situation filled with lust. And Joab calls him and says, David, I'm about to win this battle. I've been Siege in this city for months now, David. We've been living out here in the field, but finally we're about to break through. And David, if you don't get over here now, they're going to name this city after me. It's going to be called Joabville, Joab Town. But David, if you want the glory from the battle, you got to get up and get here. You know what his general was telling him? David, we need you. David, you got a place here and you're supposed to be here. So be here, David. And David gets up and he gets on his high horse and he leads the battle and he gets the breakthrough. You see, God has more plans for you. Winston Churchill had that black dog, as he called it, hanging on his back, barking at him all the time, threatening him, growling at him, telling him to stay down. That's what he called his depression, the, the black dog. But he had to win that war. He had to overcome the Nazis. He had to, he had to be there for his people. He had a greater destiny than that. And David's been down, but now he gets back up. He washes. He worships. Another man that suffered terrible depression but did great things was Beethoven, the great composer, there was a time when he worked for the churches, a time when he worked for the courts, and there was many times where he had these bouts of manic depression where he'd swing from one side to the other, but even in the midst of all that, he would write. Some of his greatest works of composition, some of his greatest uh, symphonies were written in those times that were the darkest for him. They, they know one of his symphonies that, that talks about that, that has the feeling of life over death. And, and his friends would report and saying, yes, it was a triumph for him. It was a, a symphony of victory. But he wrote that from a very dark place, a very difficult place. But he had to get up because the people needed it, because it gave God the glory. Today, I want to challenge you. No, I want to encourage you. I want you to know that God wants to come alongside you and help lift you out of dark places and say, hey, you can get up, you can wash, you can change, you can be anointed. Come face me, come come worship with me. I got, I got more for you. There's another chapter. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, how we love you, how we need you. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit who leads us and guides us in all truth. Lord, for my brothers and sisters that are hearing this, that are having a hard time, that are feeling down, been discouraged for a while, or even bouts of depression. Lord, we know many godly people struggle with depression and had to had to keep battling. Lord, I pray they'd have a victory today. 
Lord, thank you for this time that we have in your word and this time together. May great things come from our lives. In Jesus' name we ask, amen, amen, and amen. Well, friends, family, it is always a joy, always a delight to be with you in the mornings. May the Lord bless you guys. Keep you. Hope to see you Wednesday night, Saturday night service. Uh, we got rooftop service and then volleyball Sunday, 8.30, 10.30 service. Great things happening. Let me see if I can give some shout outs. Don, good to see you. Come on, brother. Good to catch you. Ken G. Hell, brother. Great Northwest. Trent Ryder, Iris. Good to see you. Jackson. We got baptism planned this week. JDV, love my life. Good to see you. Jeff Walker. Hey, for the love of God. Good to see you guys. Olivia, good to catch you. Oh, J Jakey, good to see you, man. We got champions watching Lou. Lewis, Olivia, oh, good to see you guys. Arnold in the house. Oh, what a blessing. There's Andre A.G. Nick, the King Kiana, Miss Jeannie. Oh, Miss Kathleen, good to catch you. Oh, my Lord bless you guys. Watch over you. I'm, I got the Mevo cameras going, so I'm trying to work it right here. Anyway, my Lord bless you guys. Watch over you. Uh, like my good friend Greg told me when you hear the good news of Jesus Christ, you can't unhear it.